So again, we've been covering the coronavirus situation very closely. And one of our go-to experts has always been Dr. Scott Miskovich of the COVID-19 Task Force and also of Premier Medical Group Hawaii. Good to see you again, Dr. Miskovich. Thank you. Good to see you and happy Easter to you and all the people that are watching. Hopefully are enjoying this day with their family and in the midst of this crisis. Yeah. Happy Easter. I know a lot of us still concerned about um, what's happening. Let's talk about Maui. I know there's been a lot of attention on what happened specifically at Maui Memorial Medical Center. What can you share about what you saw on the ground there? Well, again, I would tell you that the morning that this outbreak of 15 was announced, uh, Mayor Victorino called me early because we are already planning going over. He accelerated our trip over there. I had a team together, I would call it my A team, uh, within about eight hours and we were on the ground. We then proceeded to do two full days of testing up in Kahului where we tested close to a, a thousand individuals there, another 450 down in Hana, which was very receptive. and. Looking face to face to all the people on the ground, there was there was fear, there was concern, there was a fear of isolation. Um, there, there was just a lot of uncertainty in the population. And sometimes we had a, a drive of about oh, there was at least a mile, mile and a half queue, and maybe five to seven hundred car- cars. So, bottom line in Maui, um, a lot of the healthcare workers we took in. Uh, it was clear they didn't have the proper protective equipment that was be, that should have been used in that situation, but we're not looking backward there. And I think we really had a good sampling and we're going back. So we have a tremendous amount of support by Mayor Victorino. We have a tremendous amount of support by all his staff on the ground and also the Maui physicians and providers are standing up. So we're, we're back full force this week in Maui. Yeah, we... We talked a lot about this last month, about kind of the need to really protect all our frontline workers. And this has really become the poster child of what not to do. And we're hearing a lot of, you know, concern on the ground from people writing to us, people who work in the hospital saying that they really don't feel protected. So what, what can they do if they just feel like their employer isn't supporting them? Well, I mean, I do believe that it is... Uh, imperative that the employer frontline tests. And I'm going to give you an example. Tomorrow is Monday. Monday, all of those people you see in PPE on TV, which are all my staff out there and volunteers, they all are going through testing. Every week I am testing my frontline volunteers, which is basically following guidelines for a public health infection crisis. When you have people who are putting their lives on the line, you have to protect them. Second, if you also notice, our frontline workers have very high quality PPE, which we're buying and finding. And, you know, I, I want to make a make a very big distinction. Um, sorry, my family's barking in the background. Um, I want to make a very big distinction that there is this myth that there's no PPE in the state. PPE is available everywhere in this state. You could buy literally millions of masks. Uh, you know, we, we just have a donation of 10,000 coming. I just ordered another 5,000. So there is no excuse for any institution to not have the proper gear for their employees in any hospital or clinic in the state of Hawaii. They can't just sit and wait for the federal government to dole out the supplies that are free. They need to go and buy it to protect their employees. Every employee in the hospital should be wearing an N95. I I don't care where you are, if you're walking amidst, and most everybody there just had a plain surgical mask. Some research from today just shows again that surgical masks will not protect them as an employee. So Why are we hearing so much, though? I just wanted to ask you about that, uh, Dr. Miskovich. Why are we hearing so much about a shortage then, if there's so much available? it It is... so disturbing to me that this is being uh, promulgated through many of our top officials in the state and hospital employees, and it is just it is just downright outright false. I could right now send you probably six or seven very valid offers to have literally you can't buy less than fifty to a hundred thousand of these, whether it's N95s, the shields the full gear it's available everywhere the world production has kicked up to now produce this and so 
I think what they're trying to do is it's trying to sit there and force the federal government to release the stockpile so they get it for free. Now it's not the time to sit there and, and wait in the soup line for free. Buy it, protect your employees. You've got to stand up for those people who are putting their life on the line. Yeah, so important. And, you know, I'm also monitoring our Facebook uh, live here, looking at if anyone has any questions, feel free to write in. Uh, we're, it's very important to, you know, our medical expert here on the front lines every day uh, battling for us um, and trying to dismiss a lot of these uh, misconceptions that are out there. Uh, you, we talked about the other neighboring islands. We don't see any cases on Lanai, for example. And I remember since you started testing on Molokai, we have seen some cases there. Tell us what's going on with those two remote islands. Um, we have a couple doctors over there trying to fuel the public to say that, oh, you know, we got this covered. They've only done, I think, less than 35 or 40 tests total. It's statistically impossible there are no cases on lanai the the um they have this misconception that because no tourists are coming that they will not have any chance and because they have zero they're safe what we have seen in the last three to four weeks is the cases coming into the state are mostly being brought by our returning family and um, relatives and people that are moving back in from colleges from school from work and Let's face it, if you have people coming back home and you come into a home and are you going to sit there in the room and not go and sit and have dinner with your family or sit around and enjoy time with them? It's not that they're doing anything wrong, but that's where the new introduction is to our state. The same thing we have to understand for the entire state to not let its guard down to say now that we've shut tourism down that we're we're 100 percent safe from new introduction. All of us have family members. I have in my home, my son just returned from NYU with his fiance and they just finished their quarantine. And, you know, but the fact is everybody has people coming back home or from travel. That's where our risk is. And the key is they have to be quarantined and it has to be serious quarantine. Are you going to be testing so, more aggressively there then in L Lanai, for example? Well, Lanai right now, the mayor wants us to go over. We're still kind of um, working on a process at this stage. There there seems to be this opposition that they're also having this myth that they don't want other people coming over because we're going to introduce it into Lanai. Every one of my staff is tested and negative before you can go out and test the public. Uh, it's not only for their protection, but I don't want frontline people looking face to face, spreading it to the people that we're testing and screening. So. I, I would also challenge the hospitals, which I don't think that any of them are doing right now, emergency room and intensive care staff at every hospital through the state and clinics and, and nursing care. They should be on a regular testing schedule. They should be tested once a week. And from my understanding, no one is doing that right now in the state of Hawaii. Okay, well, I'm just going to look at, uh, there's some questions coming in um, from Joyce Castillo, for example. She says, I'm doing heart surgery on Wednesday. Should I be worried about doctors and nurses that don't have the right protective gear? Um, I guess it's hard for me to comment without knowing which hospital she's going to. I do believe that the operating rooms are being very, very careful. So I would feel that uh, the operating rooms are quite safe. Um, again, my feeling is what I worry about is how much are they testing those employees because we know very well now that 20 to 40 percent or higher of people with positive COVID are asymptomatic and still can be shedding. This is one of the more concerning facts that we have now going across the world. And, uh, and, and, and so the, unless you're testing, and yet as of yesterday, our Department of Health is still saying, they're denying, they're denying this fact that it even exists. They're saying, no, don't test. You don't test asymptomatic. You don't test close contacts if they're asymptomatic. It's just a, there's such a massive divide between what the, what the world knows and what is being uh, discussed here at our local level by the leadership. What's, what side of the fence are you on then? Oh my God, we need to be testing. The, every, every, like widespread. Every widespread testing, of course. Widespread testing has been shown again and again throughout the world to be the only way that we are going to basically be able to, um, to get control of this. You widespread test, you get the positives, you track the contacts, you isolate, you quarantine, and you repeat, repeat, repeat. You combine that with social distancing, the masks that we're using, the shutdown we have. 
we have a chance to be one of the other success stories in the world, along with Singapore, Germany, uh, Macau, uh, South, South Korea. Korea. Yeah, yeah we, we have a chance to do that. But the only way we're going to do it is follow the current literature, follow what's going on across the world, which is now aggressively screening contacts, whether you're symptomatic or not. Also take these high risk areas and begin to look like look at um, screening contacts. One of our biggest our biggest challenges, which is our tinderbox, just outside of what just happened in Maui Memorial, which is just going to keep spreading uh, until we get under control, are all of our shelters here on Oahu and all of our group homes. They are critically going to need attention, and there is a big denial at all levels that that we shouldn't even pay attention to them. But two or three of them, if they get the spread just two days ago, San Francisco had 70 people in one shelter positive. I was, we were just on contact with Dr. James O'Connell, the founder of Homeless Healthcare in Boston. He just screened one of his shelters. Zero people that were positive had a fever. Very few had coughs. He had 145 mostly asymptomatic individuals in a shelter positive. That is just something that makes us shudder. And here in Hawaii, we're not doing anything about it. We're not even addressing it. Uh, as a matter of fact, the shelter workers are all, the shelter owners are all coming together, um, lobbying to say, no, no, stay away. We got it covered. No, no, we're, we got this under control. And all they're doing is checking a temperature when someone walks in. Um, we wow, are so really dangerous, very dangerous right now. We need to do something. We're going to need to thin out probably 80% of every resident and every shelter and group home if we want to prevent other very big clusters that will be very uh, dangerous to our hospitals and our ICUs. Yeah, last time you we talked, you mentioned, you know, that you thought that there there could possibly be at least a thousand undiagnosed cases on Oahu or at least statewide alone. Are you still believing in that? What What do you think that number could be at this point? Um, the epidemiologic people that I'm dealing with, which are really high level experts, uh, are telling that their data calculations of probably three to four thousand statewide right now wow. uh, so obviously do the population data you know that means we're probably dealing with that three thousand on oahu and now with the outbreak on uh, maui which is just basically as we look back maui has been going on for a while there have been a lot of positives throughout the hospital and they really are if we're going to find it, it's going to have spread in many different areas so mm -hmm. um so just be prepared as the numbers come back from Maui, they are going to go up, but we have to aggressively um, uh, check them. Like we're going back, we're going back to Molokai on Tuesday. Wednesday, we're going to be um, uh, back. Let me think it's, I think we're Lahaina on Wednesday, uh, Kahului again on Thursday. Um, there's another team in Kahului this week, which is the Maui group, and we're back to Hana on Friday. So we're going to really be canvassing it. And again, I want to give a shout out to, uh, to Mayor Victor Reno. He is 100% behind knowing that this must be done and is just saying, please come, because he believes that testing is the way, as does his staff. Yeah, we really need to have that partnership with the government as well. I did have a question here from Kale Kaui. He says, you know, can you explain the public-private partnership? Because obviously we know, Dr. Miskovich, you have your private practice, the premier medical group that has been doing a lot of these testing out in the community. Uh, but what can the state do to up its game, to put more skin in the game? Because it seems like your private practice is really doing most of this testing. We are. And, and I would also give a shout out to the volunteers since we started to do it, which was all my practice. I probably have another 200 volunteers that have selflessly stepped up. A big shout out to the APRNs, nurse practitioners. I have other doctors. I'm just plain volunteers. Um, uh, the, the number of volunteers we have is tremendous. So this is a massive um, outreach by the pub private medical community to embrace the state. I think it's fair to say we have, it's, it's just the opposite. We've gotten great support from the mayors. Oh, every mayor, we haven't been invited over to Kauai, but would be willing to go. But essentially, uh, Mayor Caldwell here, Mayor Victorino, Mayor Kim have all been fine and helped us. Uh, there has, it's exact opposite. The state behind the scenes is doing everything they can to shut us down.
which is just ridiculous. So there is zero support from the state. We have zero funding. As a matter of fact, we're, we're, we're battling political influence from the state every time we turn around. And so we're not stopping. This is for the people. This is private. And, and uh, when the mayors open up their doors to us, we're going to follow the counties uh, because we know it's the right thing to do. Yeah, very important work that you're doing. Um, someone from Maui Memorial also writing in saying, you know, can you help convince them to do more testing and to do more protective? Is there anything that you can do on your side to help the people on the ground there? Because they're really worried. Um, one thing I can say that is quite positive is I have developed a really strong, almost daily working relationship with Tulsi Gabbard. And we talk, we text, and she is keenly aware of what's going on in the ground. And I am very impressed with her knowledge of what's going on and how aggressive she's um, taking a stance. So I believe that she's going to stand up again and try to support the people of Maui. I'm also impressed with our, our mayor, Victorino, and uh, and he is going to he's just doing everything to make uh, mass testing available. So as per forcing anything to happen in the hospital, we don't have that control. Uh, that's that's something that, you know, doesn't come from us. But I think it, it comes from the public. It's there for the public. We're hearing the staff of the hospitals all reaching out, concerned about what's going on. And I think their voices are being heard. I do think so. Now they're able to take their own protective gear into the hospital. And hopefully, since they have just had like four pallets apparently delivered two or three days from, ago, there's no excuse that that hospital should not be fully geared up with the right amount of protective gear. Yeah, and I'm just going through all these messages. A lot of them are, you know, Maui people just saying, what can we do? How can we change the mindset there? Because they're really worried about the situation there. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know what else other, other advice that we can give other than um, just like you said, just maybe putting pressure on the people uh, who are yeah. making those decisions. Yeah, support. Well, you know, I think you have support at the county level, which is always where it starts on the neighbor islands. I think you jump up to the federal level we have. But I think bottom line is sooner or later, we have to really put pressure on the Department of Health to kind of come up to this century and start looking at what's going on across the world and understand what needs to be done. So I think that's where we all stand right now. We know testing needs to be done. It has to be aggressive. The other myth that is just very disturbing to me is, oh, we have no testing equipment. Um, of course we have testing equipment. There's always six to 12,000 tests available at any given time. We're going to have, in another week or two, uh, diagnostics and clinical lab are going to be able to perform on island, probably anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 turnaround tests in one day. We have another 12 to 15 of the new Abbott testing machines, which will give you a five-minute result. We are fortunate. We are not hampered by testing. The other thing that you know, drives me crazy is I hear the same in the same sentence, these leaders say, oh, we're going to put strain on PPE if we test. Mm. Now think about that. You're saying don't test that someone's supposed to go home and like spread it to their family because we don't want to put strain on the PPE supply. Wrong answer. We need to test and we need to stop this from going into our extended um, Polynesian homes in our Ohanas that have 10 or 15 people in. I'm just so concerned about those people also. I did uh, interview for... an epidemiologist about that, actually, uh, Dr. Miskovich, and he said because um, the PPE shortage, that would take out the health worker who was actually doing the test. That, that was his argument just from that interview, I remember, because I remember he made that argument saying we shouldn't just be testing ca carte blanche. Right. Because each time you do that swab, um, it aeros aerosolizes it. I can't remember the word he used, but it turns it, it exposes it to the air. Oh, that is just 100 percent fictitious and false. And that's mm -hmm. he's the statistician versus everybody we're dealing with with the clinicians that are doing that. That, that is just absolute 100 percent not true. OK, so. Yeah, I mean, when they say exposed to PPE, they're just talking about that those people people that are doing testing are in PPE. I mean, like I said, take the PPE out of the equation. If anybody wants data, if you want to, if you want to put like 
uh, 10 examples up on the screen for the television audience to see in the future, I will show you the massive amount of PPE that's available to the world right now. It is everywhere and it can be delivered in two to seven days if we need it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and your dogs are enjoying our conversation as well. <laughs> Uh, May Raposo wrote that, uh, or is this May or Mel? Mel. Mel Raposo says, you know, he's on Kauai. How do we get you to go there? Are they doing Uh, um, enough testing there? um, You know, in general, Wilcox is quite strong, but they're only doing the drive-up testing. They have not done a broad (laughs) drive-through testing or walk-up testing. And um, and so I I do... um, I, I think they have, a, again, a strong infrastructure. I think it will be up to the mayor. If the mayor, as, as I've mentioned earlier, we're going at the invite of the mayors, and I'm very impressed with what Kauai's mayor has been doing in addressing this, and I could have a team there in a second. I think if we did two big drive-throughs and we could get another four or 500 people that were uncovered, tested over a couple of weeks, we're going to get a very good idea of the prevalence of the disease there. And... Uh, and, you know, because, again, when I hear that they just announced they had their first community spread this week, that does concern me that there is not enough broad testing. The other thing is, you look, what, what I want people to do, you know those maps that are being produced and you see the reds and oranges yes. and yellows and whites? What I want everybody to do is go and look at the whites. When you have a pandemic like this that is this broad spread, every white area, for example, look at the white areas on Oahu. Wahiwa, North Shore, Kahalu, or North Shore with um, uh, Laie, Haleiwa, Waimanolo. Um, what, what's, what, are the, what do those represent? A Wahiwa, they represent peri- places, very high density of Native Hawaiians, lower income. People were taking the bus. They're not driving. There's, it's impossible that there's no positive cases there. So go around the state. Any area you see a white, don't sit and rest and say, geez, we're lucky we have no cases. That just means we probably haven't concentrated enough testing in that area to identify it. So we're going to be now taking it to those communities and not doing as much of these just big, broad drive up. So coming up in the next week or so also, we're going to Wahiwa. We're going to be going up to uh, Laie to be uh, doing a North Shore. We want to get to Waimanalo. Uh, you know, we did we did uh, Y and I boat harbor on Friday. So across the state, we have a teams. I have teams that are go to Hilo and Kona. We're going to be going to Kau. We're going to go to North Kohala. Uh, so we're going to focus on those areas. Kauai should be thinking the same thing, and uh, we're happy happy to reach out to help them. Yeah, so important. I mean, you make a good point. We're seeing you know nationally indigenous populations, um, dense urban poor uh, neighborhoods really hit hard by this, but we're not really shedding enough light on it. And you mentioned, you know, our Native Hawaiian groups maybe aren't getting enough attention on this matter, too. What can we do to change that? Well, the basically, you know, what our groups are doing in the private medical community is we're not waiting. Um, I will, again, say that we're getting a lot of support from the mayors and we're just going into the communities. We're going into the communities and we're just going to make it available. We're getting the neighborhood boards. A lot of the local representatives, both uh, state senators and state reps, are really behind setting these up. Pr- practically every community-based uh, uh, screening we did, we had the state reps and the state senators all were there helping. And actually, some of them were in were in masks and standing right with us. So if we have to go into our communities and support our community leaders to make this happen. And it has to continue. Are you seeing that with UH Manoa as well, like the, the university? I... I Just that I, it was a question we, also. That's why I'm asking. Um, it, makes, it makes good sense because we're... I'm working with... Uh, Uh, Dr. David DeRoff from our community health center downtown that we're going to also focus on some of the um, the housing projects in the middle of kind of central Wahoo Kalihi area and things because we think those are also very untouched but also very vulnerable because of the type of population and the uh, and the density. So we're actually probably going to do pop-ups almost in the middle of those those areas to try to reach out to those individuals to encourage them to walk up. Mm -hmm. Very good. And People are just asking, where can we get all this information? You mentioned all these different testing uh, times and places that you're going to be. Where can we find this information? Um, 
I will make it available. We're going to try to get it out to the media. So uh, it's this, just so you know, this morning I've already been on with leadership. I was on with the mayor, Victorino, yesterday, probably three or four times, almost for an hour, and his chief of staff and all his other leaders. I've been on with Maui leaders this morning. It is a very dynamic process. And, uh, and you know, that's the advantage of having a private group. Let's face it. If we wait for federal or state governments to move quickly, that just is, I'm not necessarily blaming them, but just traditionally they have, they don't have any ability to move quickly yet. Private organizations and individuals who have come together for the right reason can. And I, you know, I can't tell you enough how proud I am of every person who has stepped up in the front lines. The, the people who have come out, there's not one selfish individual they're all selfless people that care about the communities. They are, I, I know the word hero is being used, but boy, these people are. They've just stepped up, and all they care about is community and helping. And that's, that's what's so incredible about this process for me. Yeah, and we appreciate you too, Dr. Scott Miskovich. I know a lot of people, we've been just getting a lot of people saying thank you to you for your work and trying to lead this. I know it's hard to work with, with the government sometimes, but... Again, you've been able to partner and uh, obviously with Lieutenant Governor Josh Green. Uh, you guys are partners in crime <laughs> in uh, protecting our community. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, um, sure. And okay, so I just wanted to say thank you again. I'll let you go back to your, I've taken enough of your time on this Easter Sunday morning. Um, but I just I wanted to give our viewers a chance to at least engage with you and hear from you and just give some sure. peace of mind. Yeah, and I do want every I want to leave everybody with some peace of mind. I believe that if you do look at where we are, we are very close to having the top number of tests per capita in the country now. And and so we are achieving our goals. And the idea is not just to do testing, but the idea is to identify individuals, to track them, as I said, uh, find them and isolate them. So I want everybody to, you know, enjoy family over Easter, do socially isolate, do remember everything they're doing. I said this in a post I wrote in the middle of the night. Have every button become their own hero in their own home. Be a hero and spread to your family that it is important to wash your hands. It is important to socially isolate. It is important to not have friends come over the holidays and do pawhana. I know it's nice, but you can maybe still do that if you stay 10 feet apart or six feet, more than six feet. So everybody have faith, do your part, and we will get through this as a state. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Scott Miskovich joining us. Happy Easter to you. Aloha. Happy Easter to you. Aloha. Bye.